Good morning, my name is Bhante Sudhasa and I'm here with Ayasoma. And today is the Day of the Dead, the day when we recollect uh, those who have passed away, so our loved ones and friends who have passed away, uh, and also an opportunity to dedicate merit to those who have passed away, and an opportunity to practice the contemplation of death, which is one of the um, central and critically important practices in Buddhism. So we can start with paying homage to the Buddha, and then we'll each say a, a few words on this topic. Namo rasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo rasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo So death is one of the uh, unavoidable elements of life. So as Bhantiji is fond of saying, um, there's a buy one, get one free deal. Buy one birth, get one death. Um, Ayasoma's upgraded that to buy one, get three free. Um, buy one birth, get one aging, one sickness, and one death. So uh, it's actually a really good deal from one perspective, not so great from another. Um, but the truth is, this is just the, the reality of things. And coming to grips with the reality of things is what Buddhism is all about. It's learning how to face the reality uh, um, of life and uh, coming to terms with it and putting down our resistance uh, to the way things are. And one of the things which people often have a lot of resistance towards is, is thinking about death, uh, so facing the reality of death. Uh, and uh, from time to time in our life, usually when we experience the death of a loved one, then it becomes impossible to ignore, uh, it becomes impossible to avoid the reality of death. And if we have not prepared the mind uh, through contemplation of death, then experiencing the, the death of a loved one can be an extremely unsettling experience. So, uh, in Buddha's practice, uh, again, the Buddha encouraged us every day to remember death, to contemplate death, to consider the fact that uh, I am subject to die, I'm not exempt from death. Uh, and also that this is the nature of all beings, so all beings are also subject to death. All beings are also subject to uh, birth and old age and sickness and death. Uh, and uh, so also, as I mentioned uh, before the beginning of this talk, it's also important to take an opportunity to uh, dedicate merit to the dead. So this also is a practice which uh, it comes right from the beginning of Buddhism. So not only do we remember the reality of death, uh, but also when we have loved ones who have passed away, which is true for literally every single person in the world. Um, so this also is a very important thing to remember. Uh, so when we're experiencing the, the death of a loved one, or if we're remembering the death of a loved one, it's, it's good to remember that this is something which literally everyone in the world goes through. Um, so it's not unique to, to any one person. Uh, for example, my father died when I was 20. Uh, and of course, it's a painful and difficult experience, but the death of a parent is something which almost every single person in the world experiences. Uh, and might be quite painful at the time, but it's, it's good to remember that this is something which is just part of the human experience. Uh, it's part of what it means to be a sentient being, is that we will experience uh, the death of our loved ones. 
and also that inevitably we, we will experience our own death. Uh, and in fact, we've experienced such deaths uh, countless times, uh, both the death of loved ones and, and our own death. These are things that we've experienced countless times in past lives. And so the Buddha spoke about the, the value of, of dedicating merit uh, to those who have passed away. Uh, so of doing good deeds, wholesome actions, uh, and uh, wishing that whatever good karma is produced through these wholesome actions, whatever blessings, whatever goodness comes about, uh, may go to the benefit also of our, our deceased relatives, our deceased friends. Uh, may they uh, bear witness to the goodness that we're doing. Uh, may they approve of the goodness that we're doing. May they rejoice together with us in, in the goodness that's being done. Uh, and in so doing, to uh, produce their own good karma. Uh, so this is something which, which also is, is quite important. It's recognizing that uh, by doing good deeds in the name of those who have passed on, uh, we're giving them the opportunity, wherever they are, we're giving them the opportunity to uh, partake in that same good karma, uh, to produce that same good karma. Uh, so these are a few uh, opening thoughts on the topic, so maybe now we can pass it to ISO if you'd like to contribute a few words on the subject. Thank you, Bhante. Um, yeah, actually, the, I was reflecting on the words that you shared in terms of how we experience death in that sort of unique way, but actually um, it's the most common of experiences. Um, and what was coming to mind was our tendency of uh, essentially trying to avoid the inevitable, trying to avoid seeing uh, what is right in front of us, um, essentially trying to constantly put the conditions um, for abhijja, uh, for ignorance, literally ignoring the reality of things, ignoring the truth, how we constantly put these conditions in place. Um, and so, yeah, for the past couple of years, um, I've been traveling to Itri most of the time with Bhante Sudazo and uh, some other times with other monastics. And uh, we've been, you know, uh, posting a lot of different pictures and um, usually folks that come, uh, that see us have this idea that, you know, we've only had kind of blissful experiences in, in Italy, just, um, you know, the beautiful sightseeing, the beautiful traveling around and so forth. But actually what prompted these um, trips to Italy wasn't just um, traveling around, but actually the old age and sickness of my parents um, that just culminated actually um, this past month in uh, the death of my father. And um, it's very interesting because uh, in the past couple of years there weren't really any pictures of old age and sickness that were posted right on the on on my family or on myself really uh, but just uh, sort of the the kind of more blissful aspect uh, just the sort of more more pleasant aspect of the of the trips and so I was reflecting on how we tend to do that uh, we tend to kind of edit that out, you know, we, we always talk about social media being in one way or the other, uh, but actually really, how is it our experience of reality? Um, what is it that we actually welcome? What is it that we actually contemplate? And we like to contemplate what we like, but we dislike <laughs> uh, contemplating what we dislike, right? So old age, sickness and death, usually we try so hard not to fully embrace it. Uh, we try so hard not to fully understand it. We try so hard to hide it, sweep it away, kind of get it, get rid of it, try to get rid of it um, as soon as possible. And so we understand the wisdom of the Buddha that encourages us, on the other hand, to recollect um, old age, sickness and death daily and on top of that he also adds 
in uh, the five daily recollections that he gives us as a gift. He also encourages us to contemplate daily how we are also the subject of old age, sickness and death, that we're not exempt from old age, sickness and death, and we have not transcended old age, sickness and death. And we're also subject to be separated from anything that we love, anyone that we love, anything that we care about, any type of inheritance, any, any jewelry, any real estate, any clothing, any, anything that we love, we love, that we like, um, as well as anyone who is dear and pleasing to us, right? So all our relatives, our, our loved ones, um, our children, whomever we have in our life at a certain point. Just by the nature of it all, we're subject to be separated from them. And there is one thing, actually, that um, is, on the other hand, our true inheritance. It's something that does follow us um, like a shadow, which is the fruits of our karma. We're related to our karma. We're intertwined, essentially, with our karma. So anything that we have done intentionally in the past of that we will be the heir of our actions. Um, so the invitation essentially that the Buddha gives us to uh, fundamentally throughout our lives to distinguish the essential from the non-essential, to distinguish what is actually important and what is not important and develop then uh, a right intention, a correct intention, um, based on the correct understanding of what is really important and distinguishing it from what is not important. But how do we distinguish what's important, what is essential? Well, by understanding the impermanence of this, this body, uh, the impermanence of all the things that essentially we interact with all the people that we interact with their fragility and so valuing it valuing the time that we actually have with uh, our loved ones um, if we literally understood the importance and the fragility of our relationships we wouldn't waste time uh, arguing we wouldn't waste time right um, developing all sorts of unwholesome mind states if we knew, okay, right now this is the last sort of five minutes or five seconds even that I'm going to spend with, uh, with my father, with my mother, with my sister, with my brother, with my um, loved ones, with my significant other, or with my yeah, children, whomever it is. We wouldn't spend much time uh, right, acting upon greed and hatred. So the understanding of the fragility of the time, the little time that we have, um, is essentially so important to act skillfully, so important to nourish wholesome mind states. But it has to come once again with understanding, embracing um, the fact that death is all around us, that sickness is all around us, that decrepitude is all around us, every single thing, even the most solid. We're here in Rome, so there's a Colosseum uh, that is the symbol of the city, and it's been there for um, two millennia now, and it's falling apart, right? So there was a time where it was all like looking all like neat and perfect. And we have the sense that stone, right, is kind of like this sort of really permanent, <laughs> permanent thing. And we can say that the Colosseum less impermanent than, um, you know, maybe uh, a wooden structure, but still, it's impermanent. Still, even a mountain is impermanent. It starts crumbling, so there, it's subject to the nature of the crepitoid. So even more so, this, uh, this body that has, you know, obviously the bones that are a little bit more solid, but still, like, most of it is actually ex way, way, way more fragile than stone. Um, everything is subject to decrepitude. And so I, I recently uh, lost my father. Um, 
happened precisely the, uh, three weeks ago. And we have this um, custom still in Italy that is unfortunately dying out uh, to keep the, the body of the person, we say it, the dead person, we keep the dead person in the home. Uh, usually the, the corpse will be put in the bed uh, where they have slept um, when they were alive. And uh, they're kept in the home for, for usually a couple of days. So uh, for three days, my dad's body was in the, was in the home. Uh, this October was actually a particularly hot month, actually very unusually hot. And the room where he was staying wasn't particularly ventilated. So at a certain point, what happened was that the corpse um, started decomposing um, faster than what it normally does. Um, so my dad's body was there for three days, essentially. Um, and because of these conditions, it was quickly actually decomposing quickly, more, more so than uh, how it normally um, happened. Um, so we, I saw every, every hour that I was going uh, there to, to pay respects uh, to my father. Maybe different people would come in and uh, give a last goodbye. Um, and it was so clear, essentially, the decomposition, the decrepitude, the fragility of this body. And it was happening very, very quickly. And that was uh, sort of the, the last gift that actually my father gave me uh, in the way that I had to acknowledge the real, essentially, nature of this, of this thing that we call body, the real um, conditions that affect this body. And the fact that, you know, when we're talking about a parent, we've actually had that parent uh, for most of our lives, right? Um, usually present in our, in our lives. For most of us, it's been the entire life, right? And so to a certain degree, actually, we've always seen the decrepitude of, a, of our parents' body because we've seen them through so many different um, stages of their lives. But it all, it's, it's interesting how it seems like it all happens all of a sudden, that all of a sudden our, our parents have aged, all of a sudden our parents are old, all of a sudden our parents are you know, dead in front of us. Um, but actually it's a process, the process of decrepitude that is happening even to us right now, even to us when we think we are relatively young or, or we are middle-aged or definitely not quote unquote, what we call in society old. But the reality is that these bodies are in this constant state of decrepitude and our parents, we are constantly seeing them in a state of decomposition. It's just that when they actually quote unquote die, that the composition happens so quickly. And so it's difficult to not acknowledge it. But the um, encouragement that the Buddha gives us, you know, getting back to those five contemplations is to observe this actually as it's happening, to observe it fully in ourselves and in others. So then we're actually not surprised when death comes and walks up. <laughs> and um, says hello fundamentally and um, so yeah so this was one of the biggest um, most potent experiences that I've had in uh, in the past month and of course you know some people have asked me because I'm a Buddhist monastic like oh so did you cry especially here in Italy you know we're very we have a very strong sense of, of family so they're like did you cry and I said yeah of course Yes, I did. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That's the first noble truth to be separated from someone that we love. Yeah. Uh, the first noble truth is, is death. Yes, absolutely. There was, um, there was so much suffering in the mind because I'm not in, enlightened yet, right? But, you know, the previous sort of death experiences that I had were when the Dhamma wasn't present 
and there was so much confusion there was so much craziness happening in in the mind so brutal the experience but this one actually there was so much less suffering because there was no confusion there was the support of the dhamma that actually guides us in the experience and gives us new lenses to really navigate what are we looking at what are we feeling why is this so so the first noble truth the second noble truth the third noble truth that there is an end of suffering and the fourth noble truth how do we actually get out of suffering so these are the moments where we can actually really investigate truly the true deep meaning of the four noble truths and so what i've been constantly con contemplating was the the truth actually of that beautiful uh, verse that we usually chant whenever uh, we are contemplating death, which is Anicca Vata Sankara, Upada Vaya Dhammino, Upajit Vani Rujanti, Tesam Upasamosuko, which essentially um, just means all things are impermanent. Uh, all things have the nature to arise and cease. The understanding of this the knowledge of this uh, brings peace and happiness. And that's precisely what we see whenever we stop trying to escape, trying to run away, trying to cultivate essentially ignorance of our experience, right? And then finding only, only suffering. When we actually stop running away, when we actually embrace Dukkha, when we actually look at the body that is decomposing of our father in front of us, when we actually look at our body decomposing in every single moment, when we understand the nature of all things, whether it's our body, the body of loved ones, whether it's um, even the planet, yeah, the planet, this planet, <laughs> and the planet outside of us, right? The earth, everything has the same sort of quality. Then there is um, an understanding and there is suffering kind of starts fading away. It doesn't have any ground where to sit on anymore. And so these are uh, just a few reflections that um, have come up to me uh, in this past month and I'll pass it on to Bhante to see if he has anything to share as well with um, on on the topic. Well, thank you, Aya Soma, for that wonderful um, series of reflections on the topic. Um, and actually, I don't have anything to add. Um, but what I I do think would be good at this time is uh, for anyone who um, has lost lost a loved one, which is again pretty much everyone. Uh, we can recite uh, short verse of sharing merit with the uh, departed relatives. Um, so you can think of your uh, loved one who's passed away. So I usually think of my father at this time. Um, but you can hold that person in mind, um, bringing up metta for them, so wishing well for them, uh, wishing for the best conditions for them, and also dedicating uh, all the goodness of your practice to them. So all of the good karma, positive energy, all of the wholesomeness that you've cultivated throughout uh, the life of your Buddhist practice and, and that you will cultivate in the future. Uh, you can dedicate all of it to the well-being of your deceased loved one. So at this time we can recite the verse of sharing merit with the departed relatives. <laughs>
And if you have any questions, you're welcome to put them in the comment sections and uh, we'll get back to them uh, as soon as we can. May you all be well, happy and peaceful, and may all good things come to you.